Hello and welcome to the 12 Lead ECG I've Got the Rhythm Archive Case Review. This is a short video looking back at some of the ECGs posted to our Facebook group so we can use them again to help us with our learning. In this episode we will be looking at Brugada. But what is Brugada? Brugada syndrome is a rare inherited heart rhythm disturbance that restricts the flow of sodium ions into the heart cells. It can cause dangerous ventricular arrhythmias and even death as a result. It more commonly affects young men of Southeast Asian descent. And although it can be difficult to diagnose, characteristic ECG changes and sometimes genetic testing are used to do so. There is no cure for Brugada and for those at highest risk due to early familial death or symptoms such as blackouts, then definitive treatment is an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, or ICD as it is known, and sometimes medications to reduce the risk of arrhythmia. What then are the characteristic ECG changes we see in Brugada? There are three different types of Brugada, type 1, 2 and 3, and a quick search of the internet will take you through all three and what they look like. However, we are just going to focus on type 1, as seen here and taken from life in the fast lane. So for type 1, we are looking for coved ST elevation of greater than 2 millimetres or more in more than one lead from V1 to V3, and that's followed by a negative T wave. On to the ECGs from our archives then, and here we have one from 2015 that was posted by Tom Reed. This patient was an Asian male in his mid-twenties who had collapsed at home after feeling dizzy and clammy. He was complaining of neck and back pain and he also reported some sporadic chest pain and nausea with a history of fever for the past few days. He had no previous cardiac history but did admit to having blackouts previously. Take a look at leads V1 and V2 where you will see that coved ST elevation with neg uh, negative T waves characteristic of type 1 Brugada. Fortunately, this patient was taken to a cardiac centre where Brugada was diagnosed and he was going to be fitted with an ICD. How about this one posted by Martin Mist and also from 2015? In this case, the ECG was recorded post return of spontaneous circulation, or ROSC as we say. It was for an Afro-Caribbean male in his early 20s. And again, you can see the coved ST elevation morphology with negative T waves in V1 and V2. Unfortunately, the prognosis was poor for this young man as his CT showed diffuse cerebral edema. Again, from 2015, we have an ECG posted by our very own Steve Hammond. This case was from a young male aged three who had a fever due to chicken pots and was witnessed to have a fit or a seizure. Take a look at leads V1 and V2. You can see that characteristic coved ST elevation with negative T waves. I don't really have a follow up or outcome for this patient, but what a good, uh, what a good catch from the attending crew. Jumping forward to our archives from 2017, we have this ECG which James Manser shared for a male in his mid twenties, presenting with a head injury post assault. This patient was known to have Brugada and it was just an incidental finding as part of the observation and treatment by the crew. Hopefully by now you're seeing some pattern recognition and it's something that you can learn from. On to our last one then, and unsurprisingly we stay with the theme of Brugada. And this ECG was posted more recently in 2018 with credit to Simon Purcell. This patient was of South Asian origin and was in his early 40s. He presented as generally unwell for four days, with a two-day story of raised temperature and rash believed to be chicken pots. Looking at, yes you guessed it, V1 and V2, we once again seen that characteristic coved ST elevation with negative T waves as we did on our previous four cases. Well that concludes this little walkthrough of archive case reviews looking at Brugada. Remember you too can search through the group's previous posts and find some interesting cases to learn from. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.